If this is uh, your first time here, uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on uh, your notification and give us the thumbs up. In this video, uh, we're going to be uh, exploring and discovering uh, the process uh, PID object. So now that our uh, program is open, just uh, want to show you quickly a couple of things. Uh, in the programs, we have only one program with a few sections, uh, and each section is dedicated to uh, a specific uh, objects in the library. For uh, this particular video, we are going to be interested in these two uh, uh, sections that are basically uh, dedicated to the uh, the control valve or the PID and process uh, PID. Uh, so if we open up this section, uh, this is the process PID. Uh, a couple of things I want to mention here. So uh, in terms of linking to uh, basically inputs, we have here the PV or the process variable, uh, as well as the override uh, and override value. As you see here, the override value uh, is left not linked, but you could link it to um, uh, you know a tag or maybe you could put a literal value in here. So when basically you are in override mode, uh, the output will go to this value that you put in here. If you don't put anything, it's going to go uh, to zero. And uh, basically, this uh, this one uh, in here for uh, uh, the override, it's coming from uh, the shutdowns of uh, basically this this uh, control valve that's controlled by a PID. And that is in here. So if we go to this uh, shutdown section, we can see that the output of uh, basically this interlock shutdowns is fed to this uh, input in here, and we just linked that back to our block in here uh, to tell it uh, that uh, we are in uh, in an override mode, for example, when, when that triggers. And then from the output side, uh, we have uh, basically the manipulated value. So that's the variable we're going to be basically uh, controlling. And then we have also uh, a couple of parameters, uh, if you're linked them for the error and error ID, in case there's uh, something not uh, working properly in the in the block, you will have uh, basically this go on and then you have a code that tells you uh, what's, uh, what's going on or why this is not uh, operating. Uh, so as you see, this is uh, uh, ready and good to go. Uh, but before uh, loading all that to the PLC, uh, I'd like to show you also the HMI uh, side. I go to the HMI. And as we see here, this is our uh, basically uh, control valve. And we are going to be controlling uh, this valve uh, with this uh, pressure, for example, of this uh, vessel. So as you see here, the pressure is going down to this control valve. And uh, saying that, I want to show you about that in the logic as well, how that is linked. So if we go back to the logic here, uh, if we go to our valve, we can see that we have here uh, the PCV uh, 1000, underscore dot dot pv it's linked in here and this one here is coming from if you go to the analog input it's coming actually from here so that's one of the reasons that we have here two pvs so we can have the second one if we have this for example used with the pid uh, loop or with this block for example we can just fed this one here uh, directly to uh, this PV uh, for, for this to work. So let's go back to our HMI here. <clears throat> so like we said earlier, this is our uh, symbol for the, the block and it's all uh, linked and it's ready to go. Uh, so we're going to uh, download it to our uh, HMI as well as the uh, PLC program, and then see how uh, how, the pro how the object uh, works and uh, its associated faceplate uh, from uh, the HMI. 
So as uh, now we have our programs are all uh, downloaded to our devices. We can see here our HMI and here's our objects for uh, this uh, pressure control valve. Uh, and just by looking from the object, we can tell that it's fully closed and we have here zero percent. Uh, and the set point is zero, and our process variable is uh, minus 25, which is basically what's confirming here. So we can see it here as well, just from uh, looking at, uh, at this object. Now, if we go ahead and open up to go to the faceplate, uh, so the faceplate we have basically three tabs one for control, uh, and then interlocks, and then uh, the setups. So let's go ahead and uh, basically finish uh, the settings. So now that we have our uh, settings uh, completed, uh, we can, as we can see here, we can set up the control action, the tuning parameters, uh, if we have uh, an interlock, uh, object associated with this uh, uh, control valve object, as well as the type of the valve, whether it's fill closed or fill open. Uh, for this particular example, um, I'm just uh, going to leave things default. So we have fill closed valve uh, and uh, forward uh, for control action. So if we go back here to uh, our control, I can put my uh, PID and auto or manual. As we can see here, this is our set point, the process variable, uh, as well as uh, my uh, output. A couple of things I will still have to set in here, which is these guys here uh, that are representing the min and max for the output. Uh, and you're going to see in a second here. There we go. So with these, you can actually set up uh, basically puts a trim on the min and the max so your output does not go below a certain value, for example, uh, and, or does not exceed certain value. So what that means, let's say if I put here, for example, 80, so my output will never exceed 80%, then I can put this to 80. Or, for example, if I want it to be between 20% uh, percent and 80%, that's the range that the output is going to be uh, in between. So it will never go below 20, and it will, it will never go above uh, 80. And we're going to see here in a little bit once I uh, uh, go to the uh, analog and, and make this uh, up and, uh, and run. Uh, also, this button here, which, which will actually take us directly to the process variable uh, faceplate that is associated with uh, this uh, PID. Basically, we have uh, some issues. We just have to uh, finish the configuration of the channel. As we well, can see here, we're outside of the working uh, range. And then this will be uh, good. And then we can put some signals so we can see how our PID uh, will work. So we'll just go back to our uh, PLC here for a second. And then just bring in my uh, PIT uh, channel. And okay, this is, looks all good. So all I need to, to do basically is just give us a signal here, maybe a, a 12 milliamps, which would be 50% uh, for our analog. As we can see here, it's 50 and then resets, so it's all good now. The channel is happy. And if we go back here, we can see this is also 50 KPI. right. So as we see here now, uh, our PV is good. Uh, we have 50 uh, KPA. We limited our uh, basically output to 20 and 80%, for example. And our set points right now is zero. So let's put this to, uh, for example, uh, 19, for instance. And as we can see here, uh, we can see that the output starts to, be, uh, start to modulate. And we can see this is uh, going up. 
And in the same way, we can see the outputs in here as well. And we can actually change the set point just from here without even uh, basically going to the face point. So right from here, you can change the set point. You can know what your PV is doing or process variable, as well as your uh, output. And if I go here, I can also uh, change to uh, manual. And then you will notice that going between manual and auto is basically uh, it's hopeless. So right now it's at 50. If I go back to auto, you see it's, it's going from, from there. If I go back to manual, it stops right where it is. And I can maybe push it back so, uh, to 20%. As like we said here, we can't go in the way because we put those limits. And if I go back to auto, it's going to start to modulate uh, from, from there. If I go to manual, also from the object here, I can tell that the, the valve is in manual mode. You can see here there is an M right there, which telling us that the, the valve is in manual uh, mode. So uh, hopefully that uh, gives you a, a quick idea on how you can uh, basically control your valve from uh, the faceplate. And uh, in a few uh, seconds here, once we uh, uh, show you how to add another valve, we're going to uh, demonstrate uh, other features as well, like the shutdowns and uh, uh, also the this. So uh, let's say, uh, for example, uh, we want to add a control valve right here. That will be uh, controlled with this uh, analog uh, channel, which is, for example, a fluid transmitter. Uh, so let's see what uh, does it take to uh, to add uh, all that. So the first thing uh, we would like to do is add our uh, flow transmitter. So I'm going to add it in here. And that will be uh, basically similar to uh, this uh, block. So we're just going to create another copy of this block and we'll call it uh, uh, FIT1000, for example. So as we see here, our uh, flow transmitter has been added and all linked. And now we are going to uh, add uh, the shutdowns that will be associated with this, uh, uh, with this valve in the same way as uh, this one here. So we have our shutdown now has been added, and I just added one shutdown here, so we can demonstrate uh, how that works once we uh, go uh, with uh, the valve from the HMI. And now we're going to add our uh, block uh, the same way as uh, this one that we have. So now that's our uh, logic has been added for uh, this uh, basically flow control uh, valve. We are going to add our graphic to uh, what we want to do in the HMI is map our uh, variables so we can use them in our screens. And we can do that by simply under here in the PLC. And uh, you can see my variables are over here. And then create. And to keep consistent with uh, other tag meaning, I'm going to delete this uh, default name. So our tags are ready to go. And then uh, I'll go to the main window. And I'm just going to make this bigger so we can see it's better. And uh, simply, I'm just going to get a copy of this guy and just drag it in here. Like that, and then bring the properties the window, and I will just change this to FCV. I just want one. Two. And then in here, uh, we're going to add the channel that is basically associated with this uh, valve, which is the FIT. And that's not what I'm going to do. It's, it's, go. And uh, get the 
is not operating. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to change this to FFCV interlocks, which is this one here. And uh, get ready of the rest. Okay, that looks good. And then we want to create a faceplate that will be dedicated to this control valve. And to do so, we will simply go to this template here, create a copy, and paste it here, or anywhere you want in your uh, screens, or Google group of pages. Uh, and then I'm going to call it FCV1000. Just copy the name, because I want to need it. And I will simply Okay, that is not what I want to do for sure. Let's go back. And then, uh, like I was saying, simply I just need to paste the name in this browser and the object is uh, good to go. Uh, and then in the same way for this faceplate, we want to link also um, the same parameters. Now, one thing I want to mention here, uh, for the faceplate, there is an extra parameter in here, which, uh, you know, as is mentioned here, uh, the PV faceplate, so for the process variable. So, basically, what that means is we have to add the name of our uh, analog channel uh, in, in here. And since we didn't uh, create it yet, so I'm going to leave that uh, like that for, for now uh, until we create the analog and then we'll add uh, the name uh, in. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to get rid of this default and uh, simply grab one of these. And then go to the properties and then change this to FIT. And then in uh, in here, we need to create the faceplate that will go with this uh, L. And uh, to do so, you can just go to the PV template as the same way as we did for the process variable. Copy it and then Based. and then I'm going to call it FIT1000 and as I need to paint, I need to copy it like that I'll go back to my object in here and that's the name I'm going to put here <clears throat> and in the same way uh, in the face plates, in its face plates we want also to uh, set up the parameters like that and like this. And then now that we have the faceplate created for the analog, we can now also add it here and we're good to go. So that's about the, the primers we have to set up for our uh, basically valve. And in fact, we have the analog and the control valve. So we have two objects, link them all together uh, in a very short amount of time. So next, we're going to load our program and then uh, uh, set up our valve and, and see how we can interact with it uh, and demonstrate uh, the shutdowns and so forth. So now that we uh, uh, loaded our program to the PLC and uh, the HMI. We have our valve in here and our channel, and we we'll just need to basically set up uh, both so we can have this uh, uh, operation. So I'm going to start with the analog first.
So now that we finish uh, the stains for uh, the analog, all, uh, it looks all good. And our flow, our uh, fake signal is 62.5 cubic meter per day for the rate. So that's all well, that's, that's good. So now we're going to set our uh, control valve. So if we go there, we'll notice it's telling us that the valve is in override uh, mode. And I don't have, I don't see any interlocks here because I didn't do any settings here. So let's do that first. So now that our uh, setting is uh, is done, a uh, couple of things I would like to uh, mention. Uh, so for uh, the valve type, we have uh, here uh, by default it's not closed or fill open. So if I put that to fill open. I will see here that I have a little blue dot. So that will tell me that this is a fair open uh, valve. However, from a control uh, standpoint or from the HMI standpoint, uh, white, it always means it's fully open, and gray, it always means it's fully closed. Uh, so that's why there's no confusion for the, the operator. And we're going to see that. Uh, when we are uh, controlling the valve. But first, we have to uh, clear these interlocks and finish up the settings for this interlock. And we'll do uh, from the PLC for FCB. So I want it to be bypassable. Like is true. What states uh, is going to be one. So let's clear that. And for the message, I'm going to make this SHH uh, as you can see here. So that's all good. Uh, our sign is good. And uh, the valve is uh, ready to. Uh, to be uh, operated right now it's in manual mode because it was in override and the last thing we have to do here is the range for your min and max uh, for your output so i'll put that to and then so that's for for the range so now that we uh, have set up our valve we can start to uh, modulate the output so give it like 88. And right away, I can see that the valve is opening in the same way as uh, we did in the, uh, in the other example. So that's uh, the same way. So for uh, the interlock, uh, right now it's all uh, clear. So we're going to trigger a uh, shutdown and then see what will happen while this valve is uh, working. So I'm going to trigger that. So like we see here, uh, right away, we got uh, an interlock indication. The valve went to all manual mode automatically, and the output went to uh, 0%. So basically, the valve uh, failed in its uh, safe state. In this case, uh, it's uh, full closed, so it's going to be fully, uh, fully closed. And uh, from the objects, we can see that uh, it's red. Um, so there is something wrong. The output here shows it's zero uh, percent. So that's what's going out from your uh, PLC as a, a signal uh, to this uh, control valve. So if we want to operate this valve, we can bypass this shutdown, for example. And when I do so, I can go back to auto mode. And then I can see here that the valve is uh, up and running again. And I'm just bypassing it here. And we can see the bypass indication here as well from the, the object uh, as well. 
So if I go back and uh, take this off, uh, we're back in, in the same mode. And you'll notice here I can't, you know, even if you try, it will uh, not let you go to the auto mode. So, and uh, even if we uh, try to hit something here in the output, it's not going to let us do any take or slide this, try to slide this. It won't, uh, it won't stay there. It will be overwritten. So that's uh, about uh, the control uh, and uh, what it takes to add basically a control valve that is uh, controlled by a PID loop. Uh, so uh, hopefully you enjoyed uh, the video. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. If you made it this far, make sure you hit uh, that subscribe button, turn on uh, your notification and give us the thumbs up. And uh, again, thank you for watching.